You've all heard of TED Talks, I assume, and you would have heard of Morecambe and Wise, Laurel and Hardy, Cagney and Lacey. Well, forget all that. I give you three talks, and I give you Ingvald and Kai. Tree Talks is a completely new concept, which we have launched and premiered here um, at this wonderful conference. And please come on the stage, Ingvald and Kai. And they will introduce... They will introduce what Tree Talks is all about. Just to give you a little bit of information about them, Ingvar Schwantel is from Austria. He's the leader of the um, FAO Forest Communications Network and head of forestry policy and information at the Federal Ministry of Forestry, Environment and Water Management of Austria. And Kai Lintonen is the deputy leader of FAO Forest Communications Network and communications manager of the Finnish Forest Association. So they're both men of the forest. They have voices louder than we could possibly imagine, and we're now going to hear them in okay. their wonderful double act. Please, go ahead. Thank you very much. Good morning. It's uh, a pleasure and a great honor to be here on the stage at, at the World Forestry Congress together with my friend and colleague Kai, and to have opportunity to share with you a few thoughts on challenges and opportunities for forest communication. Okay, let's face it, forestry has an image problem. It's a fact that if we do not communicate properly, someone else will do it, will do it for us. And people already are. Many people think that felling trees is bad for the planet. But this is a mass generalization. Done responsibly and done sustainably using trees for the many wonderful products we can make out of them is one of the best things we can do for the planet. However, it's often stated that sustainable forest management is just another term for destructive logging. The forest sector has been in the forefront of defining uh, sustainability and putting it into practice. And this is a story we should be incredibly proud of, but we need to tell it better we need to tell it louder, larger, longer. Save a tree, use PVC. How do you like this one? Well, this slogan sounds as if it makes sense, but uh, in reality, it doesn't tell. Uh, what it does not tell is that it takes oil to produce PVC, and we all know that uh, the planet's oil reserves are limited, whereas our forest resources are renewable. Time after time, after time, after time, after time. Thank you, sorry, but uh, there's no doubt. We live in a scarce world, and the key to a bio, green, or whatever future fit economy is how we use and reuse all the materials in a circular way. And forest products have a clear head start on this. Okay, timber burns easily. It twists and it rots and it shrinks. Yeah, but timber has been a construction material since the dawn of mankind. And it has proved itself to be resilient, to be robust, to be strong. And it's still the smart choice for today and the future. We didn't make all this up. These kinds of myths and oversimplifications are common throughout the world still. But how did we let this happen? Our challenge is still that we undervalue and misunderstand communication. By that, what do we mean by communication? Robert just before told us that uh, for, to be effective and successful in communicating, you need to know your enemy. So who is our enemy? And our enemy is certainly not uh, products, materials other than wood. Our enemy is ignorance. Ignorance uh, about how forestry works. Ignorance about what sustainable management actually does with the forests. And ignorance about uh, the benefits well-managed forests provide. So, how do we break through this jungle of ignorance and confusion? We need to build a dialogue, a strong, continuous dialogue on forests, uh, where 
listening is at least as important as talking. We know that other campaigning organizations and competing sectors are spending hundreds of millions of dollars on promoting their messages, and they're simply more effective than us. These kinds of resources, they're still unimaginable for the forest sector. Let's be realistic, and we should not neglect the fact that uh, uh, efficient, effective communication requires resources. Another prerequisite for good communications is that we speak with one voice and the same message. And this is still something that our fragmented forest sector could do a lot better. Here's an example from Europe. In the EU, forest-related issues are splintered into various directorate generals and other institutions. And on the European level, there are some 250 organizations promoting forests and wood, broadly speaking. So are they doing that with consistent messages? On the other hand, the concrete lobby has three. So what do you think? Whom will the decision makers listen to? Don't get us wrong, there are excellent examples of great forest communication and uh, we will learn about some of these uh, in this very session. Well, we need more of these. We need to emulate from them and we need to learn from them. So what can we learn? I mean, I will not touch upon the age of Kai, but I'm 60, yeah? I'm 60, uh, which means I'm not in the, all the modern, uh, now up-to-date uh, ways of communicating. But of course, with 60 years, you build up some experience. And based on our experiences, Kai and I put together a little list of issues that matter, that matter for making communication work. And number one on this list is political will. If you don't get the support from the top, you won't succeed. You need the people who hold the budgets and take the decisions to understand the importance of communication to their core business. Then capacity to communicate well. Which means we need the right people with the right skills and the right knowledge. And if they're not there yet, we need to find them or train them. There's no free lunch and as said before, communication needs resources. Yes, communication, as, in, as any other activity, comes at a cost, and it needs to be a part of the budget. So, actually, many of organizations are including a percentage on communication on their budgets and projects already. And you need a strategic approach. To fail to plan is a plan to fail. Good communication needs to be planned and sustained, and we need everybody involved to be aware of what the messages are and what we need to achieve. Uh, communication is done for a purpose, of course. You need aims and objectives. Many good communication strategies, they start with a set of clear objectives, so we're specific about what we need to achieve. And you should use and gather solid evidence. So you base your objectives and tactics on the best facts, knowledge and data available to you. You must understand your stakeholders. Whom do you need to communicate with? What do they think or do now? What do you want them to think or do? Why wouldn't they? And well, how can you reach them? And for a fragmented sector like forestry, forming partnerships is of crucial importance. So you pool your resources with others and you come up with common messages and then you capitalize on the strength of each, other, each of the partners. And you need to be imaginative and creative. Great communication is to get and hold people's attention. So we need to do it in a unique and innovative way. And number 10, last but not least, persevere. We all know that big changes will not happen overnight, so we can't give up. We have to keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. So this is what we wanted to share with you here. It's certainly not as touching as the presentation by Robert and probably not that f as funny as Lawrence, uh, Laurel and Hardy, but at least we try to provide you with some food for thought.
Thank you. Thank you very much.